and welcome back to Regimentals YouTube channel. Apologies for presentation today, I'm in my storeroom um, because I've just been consigned a large collection of Imperial German headdress which I'm really excited about to show you. Um, so I've just kind of downloaded, I've, I've just kind of uh, loaded it all into my storage unit, priced it all up, uh, dictated it and um, I just wanted to show you the video um, before people start coming around trying to buy them. So um, I've already had a lot of interest from word of mouth, people know that I've got them. I wanted to get on the YouTube video um, prior to them seeing them and also uh, prior to the update. So been really busy. Uh, as I said in my last video, um, I was opening my new restaurant uh, in the week previous. So I've been running around um, trying to juggle two jobs at the same time. Good news is that is going really well. Um, we opened on Wednesday, uh, it was our first weekend, the queue was out of the door, every seat was filled, so that's all really good news for me, uh, it's just very stressful. I uh, just want to continue on with the video and I just want to run through some of the pickle hogs that we got in this collection and after that I'll show you a few other pieces which are also on this week's update, um, some really nice interesting pieces that you'd like to see. So um, as you can see the collection um, is all come from a collector in the UK. He's been collecting, well I've known him for uh, maybe nearly 15, 20 years now, and he has a very, very good eye for uh, Imperial German headdress. Um, and you can see with the helmets that they've all come from the same collection. He, he obviously has very, very fine taste. Um, uh, the items are kind of like they're sleepy, never been touched, never been messed around with. Um, none of them are super mint, um, but they're almost mint. You know, it's, it's kind of like, you can just see that one person has collected them all. Um, there's nice field greys, um, the 1915 model, there's the earlier ones, the, the, the brass with the brass fittings. He's got um, officers, lots of NCOs and some enlisted mans. Some of the best ones um, in the collection is uh, possibly this one, the, uh, the Brunswick. Uh, really nice condition. This is probably the best condition of all of them. Um, it's got the flat uh, chin scales here uh, and the, uh, the domes on the top here for NCOs. So it's quite unusual to find an NCOs one. You do see officers around, but an NCOs one is almost, uh, I'd say, rarer. Price on this one is going to be £6,250, but you will never find a nicer condition one than that. That's probably the star piece in the whole group. Um, there's a Prussian officers reserve there. There's a Hess artillery office, uh, NCOs there, which is nice. The um, Saxon duchies. We've had a few Saxon duchies recently, um, but they seem to sell straight away. Maybe I'm selling them too cheap. Um, I do keep pe uh, keep having people say to me that some of our prices are quite reasonable. So maybe we're too cheap. I might have to review the price of that because the last two that we had, they just they just sold straight away. That is a really nice one. I've always liked these kind of tropical uh, pickle halves. This is uh, what they call like the Palestine version. They're, they're cork or cloth covered cork so the body would be made from cork and they're covered in cloth lots of lovely stampings in there really nice stampings so untouched and and all of these helmets they're the first uh, collection that i've seen that really remind me of the the baldwin collection um, he obviously had a very very similar taste or was inspired by the michael baldwin collection here's another uh, felt and uh, cloth covered one again similar to book ones you see in the um in the Feldzug series Really nice piece, super condition, and regimentally marked there to the 106th. Uh, moving on, there's a Hess, uh, a nice Hess enlisted man's there with the brass fittings. Saxons, another Hess one down there, Saxon again. And then here we have a super piece, which is the Prussian General's one with the plume. These are always really popular in America uh, because they look so, you know, elaborate. And that's a really good condition one. The insides uh, had a little bit more wear, um, but it would still look really nice uh, in someone's house as a display piece. So running through the ones on this shelf, you've got uh, a Württemberg, uh, Pioneer, uh, Guard Dragoons with the square peak, which signifies dra Dragoons, um, a nice Barden. And this is probably one of the rarest ones in there. This is the Barden 109. And um, as they always are, it's regimentally marked inside R109. Really nice helmet that, that will, that will be very popular. The, uh, the Mecklenburg's always popular. And again, this is quirky and really nice. Another one of my favorites, which is um, partly cloth covered and then the peak and the rear peak are the leather covered. So that's like a, a combination of the two. That, that particularly looks like a really interesting one. 
Here we have an Oldenburg. Um, I had an Oldenburg maybe about six months ago. Again, it sold really, really quickly. And then moving down to the steel helmets, a back damaged camouflage one, two covers. Um, you know, this, this is interesting because um, you can see the different types of cloth used. Now, I should imagine this one has been transferred from Regiment 66 to Regiment 166. I saw this when we were handing the Ball Green collection. Um, he had one where one of the numbers was made up from a different cloth. And that's probably the same thing that's happened there. Right, so the Imperial German steel helmets. This one here is possibly one of the best Imperial German camos that I have ever seen. Um, really interesting colors. Um, you know, a nice matte finish, the traditional thick separation lines. It has the strap, it has the pads. It's a, a superb helmet. And my friend Ollie, uh, we all, uh, most people watching the video know Ollie. Um, as soon as he sees this helmet, he will be trying to buy it from me. So um, I'll do my best to get it onto the update before he finds out about it. Um, so they're the items in this collection. And, um, you know, I'll probably get them onto the website, probably four or five at a time. Um, if you see something in the video here that you want to know more details about, I'll do my very best to answer uh, your questions. I, I'd say that we are selling a lot of items direct from the YouTube video rather than even hitting the website. So, you know, never be scared to give me a shout and, and, and I can try and send you some more photos. However, the best way for me to send you more photos is usually by WhatsApp on my telephone. So if you see something here or you want to know a price, let me know um, and I'll do my best to answer you. So moving on to other items that will be on this week's update, um, you might have seen in the intro clip here, we have a guard de corps helmet. Now this did not come in that collection, but um, I always like to feature guard de corps helmets because they look so um, amazing and they're always really popular. This is a really, really nice example. Um, just behind it here, we have uh, two Knight's Crosses. Now, these don't come around very often. They're both uh, Steinhauer and Luck uh, makers. Uh, one is cased in its original box. The other one is loose. I do have a friend of mine. What Interesting, what happened? I, I had a friend come round who said to me, if you ever get a Knight's Cross, let me know. Uh, and then literally within three days of that, I got a call and found out that there's a couple of Knight's Crosses um, on the market. So he will be coming to see these. They might not, or at least one of them, might not make it onto the website. Um, but, um, you know, a really, really good um, idea to feature them in the video so you can see that we are actually getting Knight's Crosses because, you know, if he hadn't have said to me he's looking for one, you know, I wouldn't have given him the first call. So, two really nice pieces there. Um, in a previous video, we featured um, some gold party badges. All of them sold very quickly, um, but I have just picked up in a trade a, another small gold party badge. Um, has a number on the back it's not a low number but it you know gold party badges are you know very popular things and this one will be on the website for you know, just under 700 pounds so you know it's a chance to pick up a, a rare badge at quite an affordable price um, these days for those okay now moving on to you know the kind of things that I really like um, yeah it's not gold it's not flashing it's not got feathers but to me this is one of the most appealing things that I've had recently this is a medical um, officer's crusher cap. And um, it's just been there and you can see it's just had so much life and action. If this thing could tell a story of where it's been. Um, I love crusher caps. They're probably one of my favorite things. And if I just look how thin uh, that, that is, the peak has been completely crushed. If I was to start collecting again, I think I would just, the first thing I'd try and get is more crusher caps um, because they're just so, so iconic. Um, you know, the correct uh, Crusher uh, Bevo insignia on there for officers as well. It's not man's, it's officers insignia. This is a super piece. This will be on the website. Um, I think we're going to be asking, yeah, £1,400 for it. So, you know, it's an iconic piece at, at a, a really good price. So that is a special piece. And then moving on to the last thing I wanted to show you was this tunic. Um, now, many people know that uh, my first love was Africa Corps. Um, I wrote the book Africa Corps uh, featuring tunics and caps. And this is a stunning piece because um, not only is it rare to find a 1940 dated tunic, 
Um, it's also rare to find anything from Africa which you can identify who the owner was. And, and what happened with this one was I managed to pick up this, 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 this tunic and first glance you think, oh yeah, it's bleached. It's not bleached. It's, it's faded in the sun slightly, but this maker were known for making um, cloth in this mustardy colour. Um, and it's got the shoulder boards on there uh, for an artillery regiment. And um, also another interesting feature about it is how high the uh, eagle is. You know, usually the eagle is, is just here below the pocket. This one has been put on very, very high. And also another interesting feature is, is the, uh, the cuff title here. So as you can see, normal cuff title, normal place. On the back side, nothing. So you think to yourself, well, you know, surely you would see, you know, a faker wouldn't put it on like that. Why, why would they put it on like that? But when you look under here, where the stitches have been removed, you can see a line of where the cuff title is with that slight bit of sun fading underneath the cuff title. So that is a really interesting feature of it. And, and what happened was, um, the person who found this tunic, it came straight from, from, from a family, and uh, in the pocket of the tunic was this little pouch. Now this is a, an ID disc holder, so the soldier's ID disc would be held in this pouch. And um, it was a handwritten name in here, Andreas Huvelar. Um, and by finding that name in the pocket, we were able to do full research on this soldier and I now have copies of um, his Verpass, all of his citations, he fought in Tobruk, um, and he carried on after D-Day, he fought after D-Day, and he managed to survive till the end of the war. Um, and it's just really rare to be able to identify something direct to, to a soldier. Yeah, this guy, he was in that unit, I've got the full history on that, on that unit as well. So the full write-up of this will be on the website, um, and, you know, it's one of the, the best pieces I've had in a very, very long time. So thanks for watching the video. Um, uh, hopefully you'll see some of these items on our website, www.regimentals.co.uk. Our next update will be on Friday. Um, now, I say our next update will be on Friday. Everyone has to be on alert. If there is no update, please don't panic. It just means that my wife has gone into labor. So my wife is, now 10 days overdue. Um, she was supposed to give birth Saturday before last. Um, it will be my fourth child, believe it or not. Um, and uh, it's a very exciting time, but it's also a very stressful time. So if I don't um, answer your text message, your, your WhatsApp message, your email, if there's no update, please understand that is the reason why um, I'm doing my very best to respond to people, but it is a very, very difficult time. What with um, my restaurant, uh, the YouTube videos, regimentals, uh, the books, and a new baby coming along. Um, I kind of feel like I'm burning the candle at um, every single end you can. So uh, please bear with me. Um, don't forget to follow us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, and uh, the update will be uh, hopefully on Friday around two o'clock.